Zani, former spokesperson for the Israeli consulate here in New York. Also with us, Ruthie Bloom, former advisor to Netanyahu. Ruthie, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Now, earlier today, Hezbollah launching a rocket attack on a soccer field in the Israel's Golan Heights section, killing at least 10 people, including children. Talk to me about this. People like to say you hear those anti-Israel, pro-Hamas protesters. They want to say that Israel and Bibi, they're guilty of a genocide. And meanwhile, Hamas continues to terrorize Israel. Well, first of all, the death count has gone up to 12. Okay. And most of them are children. They're from age 10 to age 20. Mm. This is at a soccer field. They were out having a nice day on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the worst attack since October 7th on Israeli civilians. And by the way, that count may grow because there are dozens of severely wounded kids in the hospital right now from that attack. Now, this was Hezbollah, not Hamas, but they're both Iranian proxies. And also, may I add, the missile that hit that soccer field was an Iranian Falak-1 missile that Iran provides to Hezbollah. Mm. Shahar, let's talk about Bibi and the difference between his meeting with Trump versus uh, Kamala Harris. Well, you know, uh, thank you very much for having me, Lydia. It's a pleasure, always a pleasure. And I want to say that um, on that issue pertaining to what we just heard about mm. Hezbollah's attack, it doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, Iran is coming for you. Just mm. like the massacres of Hamas in October 7th, did not make any differentiation between progressive Israelis and more conservative Israelis. Iran's agenda vis-a-vis -vis Israel, the West, and the United States of America is exactly the same. The views that you just showed on the air, on the screen, of burning the U.S. flag and torching those monuments, and the admission by the head of U.S. Uh, Director of National Intelligence only on July 9th, indicating that Iran is funding those protests. It's underwriting this chaos and disruption in the U.S. is a challenge that any administration will have to pursue. And the question before the American voter is, which administration will face it better? Mm. We have less than a minute left, so I'll ask you both this quick question. Ruthie, you go first. President Trump, with his meeting with Bibi, he said if Kamala is elected as president, we could have a World War III. There will not be peace in the Middle East like there was under his administration. Ruthie, do you agree? And then, Shahar, I want your response as well. Well, I agree to, to the extent that uh, we see the entire world uh, burning up right now. Okay, we don't need to wait until the next administration. And we do have President Trump on record, just as we have President Biden on record. Uh, president Trump brokered a peace deal. There were no wars when he was president. And we see what's happened under the Biden administration. And under Kamala Harris, if she were to be elected, it would be more of the same and probably worse. Shahar? Courage is what's needed at the moment, countering evil and facing it head on. We need a strong United States of America alongside a strong Israel. And that's what's before our very eyes. Shahar Azani, Ruthie Bloom, thank you both so much. And we pray for thank the you. families devastated Amen. during that attack. Thank you. Thanks. Coming up, Trump heads to the traditional.